I was on my way into my New York studio today and I stopped at Central Park in this little place called Strawberry Fields. And those people you see behind me have come to pay tribute to John Lennon. There's an imagined uh, medallion right there on the sidewalk. And it made me think to make this video because it's inevitable. Every day somebody shows up with a guitar and starts singing Beatles songs. Here I stand, head in hand, turn my face to the wall. Now in true it's New York fashion, what can I start can out as one guy and his guitar singing a song can sometimes small. escalate into one massive sing-along. Now I only bring this up because one of the most common complaints I get from singers is that it's hard to find places to perform. I think that's one of the big reasons why shows like American Idol and The Voice are so popular. Of course everybody in line there dying to get in uh, has a quest for fame, but it's also a golden opportunity to perform for such a huge audience. Well, if you didn't get chosen to be a contestant there in, that, in one of those shows, don't get down. Get out there. Get out here. Hey, New York's not the only place friendly to street performers. There's Sixth Street in Austin, Texas. There's Faneuil Hall in Boston, Harvard Square in Cambridge. But most of these places require a permit to play out in the street. Like this guy here on Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica, California. But whether you're young or have a few years of experience under your belt, this guy here is making a fan in New Zealand and this guy here is honing his craft in Manchester, England. Anywhere, anytime, you can find an audience. So if you're not a fan of karaoke bars, which is another good way to get some stage experience, start looking around your town. You don't necessarily need a permit to go out and play in the park somewhere. And if you're a little bit performance shy, it's kind of a good way to break the ice, to play near some people, but not for some people. That way, you know they can hear you, it'll put a little pressure on you, but you're also not putting any anxiety on the performance where you could just pretend you're practicing, which essentially is what you're doing. Playing outdoors is obviously weather related, so take advantage of the nice days and use the rainy days and the winter seasons to develop new material or make your YouTube videos. The great thing about YouTube is that it's available to everybody. The bad thing about YouTube is that it's available to everybody. So coming out of your bedroom and playing live automatically sets you above the rest. Although I will say Esme certainly found an audience and Carmen certainly cashed in on YouTube. And everybody knows it was a great launch pad for this unknown singer. There's an old saying in showbiz that all the world's a stage, but that's only true if you're out there performing in it. Now, unlike waiting to see how many hits you can collect on YouTube, singing live gives you an immediate feedback as to how you're connecting in a song. You could see it in your listener's eyes, and there's no more valuable information for an artist to work on his craft. It's what created the legacy of the guy they're paying tribute to behind me. And it can do the same for you if you can just imagine yourself out there.